We're going to have a great show today. I'm going to mess around with hot ice. We are going to play with toys. I'm going to do some Q&A with G. I'm going to give a shout out to a lot of people. And we might even mess around with some music if time permits. So stick around. It's going to be a great time. Come on, let's get started. Today, we're going to be playing around with hot ice. I know, I know. On the last show, I said that we were going to mess around with smoke bombs. But I've got some chemicals on order that are necessary to make those, and they haven't arrived yet. So today, I thought we'd mess around with hot ice. A lot of you viewers out there have been asking about hot ice. So let me show you what we're going to use to make our hot ice. Some people use sodium acetate, but I'm going to make it kind of more from scratch. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use plain old white vinegar, some baking soda, actually four tablespoons of baking soda. I'm going to use one liter of white vinegar. Let's pour that one liter of vinegar into our pan here, like a saucepan, like a medium saucepan. Now let's take our baking soda. Now we've got to be careful at this point because baking soda and vinegar react. They actually um, react with each other and they will produce um, carbon dioxide. I remember we did a show on that. Now, we want to add this very slowly until we have four tablespoons of baking soda in our vinegar. Now, it helps to break that down and not bubble up so much if you stir a little bit. Oh, well, looks like we're going to bubble over here. Yeah, we bubbled over a little bit. That's okay. If you bubble over, don't worry about it. Just have a, just have a cloth handy. To, uh, to wipe up any bubbled over solution. No big deal. We'll get that wiped up. There we go. No big deal. Comes right off. There it goes again. It might bubble over again. I'll tell you, I'm not having good luck with this. There it goes. It's going to bubble over. Ooh, that one might make it in. It might stay in. Yep, looks like we, uh, we didn't break that time. Lucky us. The rest of that. Uh oh. Uh oh. Whoa, it's getting huge. Slow down. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. I don't know where. Somewhere. Now, when I add the fourth one of these uh, tablespoons of the baking soda, we're going to let this boil down and we're going to move on to another part of the show. We're going to move on to. Q&A with G. So stick around for that. Now we're not going to play with this uh, hot ice right away. It's going to cook down. So we're going to let this boil and we'll come back and play with it in a little bit. See you then. It's time for the shout out. Today's shout out goes to Ray Cortinas 1, The Pyro Expert, Retardo 2424, Master Mickey 27, The Skater Boy 61, Pop Law 111, ECCK or EC 2, With Stoker, AJ4Y08, Mega Guitar Teacher, King Sacker, Nared98, and especially to Furnus and all of his friends out there playing Eve Online. Hi Furnus and thanks for all your help. Ready everybody? And also if you didn't hear your name in this list and you think it should be there, let me know. Are you ready? Here we go for the shout out. Ah! Today on the show, we're going to play with some toys. Christmas is around the corner, and you know everybody likes a really, really cool toy. Today's toy is the Fun Fly Stick. Everything around us is made up of atoms, and when atoms have more electrons in them, they're said to be negatively charged, or more negatively charged, than atoms that are their counterpart with fewer electrons. What this magic fly stick does is it creates a wand which is greatly charged with electrons, very negatively charged wand. And by taking small mylar shapes, it can transfer that charge to them. Now when two objects are negatively charged, they repel each other, just like two south poles of a magnet repel. 
to negatively charge objects repel. Now, when these objects come into contact with something more positively charged, the electrons bleed off and the object will collapse. Watch, I'll show you what I'm talking about. This toy is a lot of fun. This is the wand here. Have a, have a look at this, you're going to love it. Now, what's happening is the wand, when I press the button, becomes very, oh, it hit the ceiling. The wand becomes negatively charged, or it has more electrons. Let's bring it back this way. Oh, it came in contact with me and discharged onto me. I must be more positively charged, or my atoms have fewer electrons. And then, when the wand becomes charged, just putting it in the presence of this piece of mylar that's cut into the shape of sort of an odd circle will cause that to float. Let's get another shape here and see what we can do with this. That one's a little bit tangled, but that's okay. Let's try another one. See what we have here. You'll notice something else. Ah, this one's the shape of a butterfly. Now watch, I'll let it drop, and then I'll bring it back up with the wand, and I'll bring it closer to me. Let's charge the wand a little bit more and make it repel even more. Now watch this, this is really cool. Look at that. It flies back and forth, because what happens is, the electrons transfer to the piece of... We can really make that oscillation happen very quickly, watch. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Because the electrons transfer to the piece of mylar, and then, because their light charges repel, the mylar and the wand repel from each other. Now, when it hits me, I bleed off the excess electrons into my body. Now, this wand shouldn't be used near electronic equipment. It can damage it. And you'll hear a sound and you might even be able to see, if it were a dark room, you'd be able to see sparks going to my hand. So anyways, that's what's called the fly stick. It's a ton of fun. Pick one up online this Christmas for some great science fun. Okay, it's time for the part of the show that I like to call Q&A with G. Let's see. Mighty Sam wants to know if I'm going to do any shows with fishing in them. When springtime rolls around, you just might see some fishing on the Mr. Jesus show. So thanks, Mighty San. Human of the Week 3000 wants to know what my top three favorite music genres are. Well, Human of the Week, first of all, I like progressive rock. These would be bands like Yes, Old Genesis, or The Flower Kings. In fact, The Flower Kings is one of my very favorite bands. Um, art rock is another one of my favorite music genres. These would be... What I, what I call art rock anyway, it's not a real genre. These would be bands like Pink Floyd. Um, also, Yes would fit into art rock. Rush may fit into art rock. So, um, art rock would be the second one. And last of all, something that I like to call indie pop. These would be bands like Death Cab for Cutie, um, The Postal Service, indie pop. I'm really into that lately, more so than any of the other genres recently anyway. Thanks for the uh, question, Human of the Week 3000. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have? Daft Punk 991 writes, Do you do a rehearsal before every video? Well, Daft Punk 991, the answer to that is no. In fact, what you just saw was shot cold. First run, these were the Q&As with G. A lot of times you'll see me flub up a little bit, but I just leave a lot of that in. And you can see a lot of my mess-ups in outtakes after the show. Thanks for the question, Daft Punk 991 That pretty much wraps up Q&A with G. Hi! We're going to play around with some music now. Last time, you heard me play something that sounded a lot like this. the end there, but no big deal. I took that basic theme and I changed it around quite a bit. 
This is what it sounds like now. The top track here is the mini piano sound. I added to it some various different um, effects. I slowed it down. I took a note out. Um, and then I started to add some different strings and some different keyboards to it. I'm going to bring in a string here. Hear that? Let's go back here near the beginning. And you'll hear a different string. Here at building. And this turned out to be 11 tracks, adding strings and various other instruments, some drums near the middle of this. And actually then, the whole song together sounds something like this. come in I'm gonna go ahead and stop this and um, you'll get to actually hear the entire song somewhere down the road stop that now. Enough music. Let's get back to our hot ice experiment. Come on. Okay, we've got our sodium acetate. It was boiled down from a solution basically of white vinegar and, um, and baking powder. Or no, I'm sorry, baking soda. Baking soda, bicarbonate of soda. Now, watch this. I'm going to start the stopwatch here to prove that this isn't trick photography. I'm going to take a little crystal of some sodium acetate that I messed around with before and watch what occurs. Right before our eyes. Amazing, isn't it? Our hot ice is solid. What started out as a liquid is now a solid. Amazing. It took me a lot of tries to get this hot ice perfect. Now I've got a paper plate in front of us with a small crystal of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some hot ice onto that crystal. Immediately it starts to solidify. 
Now, we can actually pour the hot ice out of the glass here and watch it solidify. And we can actually build with it. Amazing, isn't it? It's like liquid sculpture. What starts out as a liquid almost immediately becomes a solid. Look at that. Isn't it neat? I love this stuff. This is amazing. Now, it's called hot ice for a reason. It's not cold like ordinary ice. The sodium acetate actually is, is, is very warm to the touch, or actually gets pretty hot because it has an exothermic reaction when it solidifies. Look at that. Pretty neat, huh? I'm getting a shadow here I don't like, so I'll move to the other side. And watch this. If it starts to trail into the glass, look at the glass. Look at the glass. Isn't that amazing? It's freezing before our eyes. The hot ice froze inside of the glass. Unbelievable. Well, that's our hot ice experiment. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was worth the wait. And I will see you next time on The Mr. G Show. Bye-bye. Are you ready for some Q&A with G? I am. Let's get started. Human of the Week 3000 wants to know, well, oh, that's wrong. Oh, I've got the wrong thing. Duh, duh.